Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user Crappy Mom Throwaway. Am I the A-hole for not telling my parents that the event they were missing was my wedding? So I, 27 female, have a younger brother, Mike, 21 male. He is the definition of a man-child and a mama's boy, always complaining, always expecting others to bow to him. Just overall, an a-hole. Ever since he was born, my parents fussed over him for everything. He's not special needs or had a traumatic birth or anything of the sort. He was just born and my parents completely discarded me. My mom, 50 female especially, she went from a loving mother to one of those boy moms that people make fun of on the internet. My father, 50 male, still showed me love and support, but he's always been too much of a coward to stand up to my mother and let me win at least once. The only one who stood for me was my grandpa, 76 male, who always called my parents out on their BS and never liked my brother. I remind him of his late wife, my grandma, and we have a very special bond. But he lives on the other side of the country and I could never see him often. Mike knows our mom prefers him and loves to shove it in my face. Because of this and his behavior, we've always been at odds. He's spoiled, a brat, and an awful human. I can't remember how many times I ended up in trouble for things I did better than him or for things he framed me for. His only talent are his football skills. He won a scholarship to a nice college out of state. My parents didn't spend a dime on my education because apparently my fund had been used to cover expenses after a fire. Just for me to discover years later that said money was given to Mike to buy a car and a house. It's at public university that I met Lucas. He was the first person I was really drawn to there. Of course, I met new people who are now my dearest friends. And thanks to them and Lucas, who was my best friend for years before we got together, I managed to move out of my parents' house. Also, both Lucas and I are well known in our fields and have very good salaries. Now to the main issue. Lucas proposed to me a year ago. We're very private people, so we didn't post it on social media or anything. And when I told my parents, they dismissed it with a, that's nice. I'm starting to think they don't write didn't listen to me at all. We decided that we wanted a nice but simple ceremony and reception with our friends and relatives. Lucas convinced me to invite my parents and brother, but they never responded to the invite. Whenever I went to visit and began to talk about my wedding without mentioning it was my wedding, my mom would always speak over me and about my brother's accomplishments and wild adventures. At one point, I got fed up with it and interrupted my mom to tell her that there was an event I was planning to organize, which date was unmovable. She told me that they couldn't attend because my brother was playing the last game of the season that very same day and wanted them to be there. Of course, this favoritism didn't surprise me. They missed my ballets, shows, and both my high school and university graduation for things about him. At this point, I wanted to be petty. I told both my parents that it wasn't a problem to miss this event, purposely omitted the fact that this event was my wedding, and didn't insist further. Flashed forward to a few weeks ago. I got married. It was perfect. My family, Lucas's family, and our friends were all there, and we had a blast. My grandpa was happy to give me away, and it was just perfect. My relatives asked me multiple times why my parents weren't there with us. I was honest and simply said they had my brother's game to attend and couldn't come. They gave me a few looks and my grandpa was visibly angry for a while, but otherwise nothing strange happened. After the reception, Lucas and I left for our honeymoon and we're phone free for the whole duration of the trip. But once we got back, we discovered that a crap storm was welcoming us home. I turned my phone on and was unable to even unlock it before a crap storm of notifications popped up. Most of them were from my mother and brother. Mike called me all sorts of nasty names and insulted me because apparently one of my paternal aunts posted the photos of the wedding on Facebook and captioned it with a very obvious dig at my parents, especially my mom, for missing the wedding. 
The post apparently went viral in my parents' community and they've been publicly shamed for their mistreatment of me. It also turns out that my grandpa personally visited my parents to go on a tirade to shame my father, his son, to the point of tears. And this seemed to be my father's breaking point because he was so distraught for missing his only daughter's wedding and for his father's disapproval that he finally rebelled against my mom and is threatening divorce unless she makes it up to me. I think that's the reason why my mom has been spamming my phone with messages. At first insulting and threatening and then downright pitiful, full of begging and pity parties. Now I'm at home with my husband deciding how to approach the situation. Most of my relatives, even those I didn't invite to the wedding, reached out to apologize for what I went through and to claim they had no idea this was happening at home. I can't blame any of my relatives, they all live with my grandpa on the other side of the country or in another state. However, my mom's sisters and friends are belittling me for not telling my mom about the wedding because now she's inconsolable at the thought of having missed my wedding. Personally, I think she just claims that to save face, but I'm not sure. The latest messages from my father and mother seem extremely saddened and hurt for missing my wedding. Now, my family is divided on three fronts. The majority, who is sticking by my side, my maternal aunts shaming me for hurting my mom's feelings, and my maternal grandparents who are adamant that I forgive my mom in light of her atonement. My best friends are telling me not to listen to them. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? Nope, OP, you are not the a-hole. I'm gonna start by your dad. First of all, his whole rebellion, I couldn't care less for it. He had 27 years to stand up to your mom and it took his dad scolding him at 50 years old to actually do something about it. No, 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 he doesn't get to be on the right side of history now. And your mom's whole spiel about being sad that she missed your wedding. You told her about your wedding. You tried telling her many times. She just didn't want to listen. So now she doesn't get to cry about it. I'm sorry for your maternal grandparents seeing the atonement. It's all BS. Opie, if I was in your shoes, I would tell your mom, the aunts, and the grandparents. I'm sorry, but I'm just not going to play this game. You people have insulted me, belittled me, and tried to guilt me but I haven't heard one apology yet. So go suck a lemon while pounding sand. I'm done. Opie out. And what do you guys think about Opie's situation? Let me know in the comment section and now let's check out the community comments. Alan Dara's Sunsong says, Not the a-hole. I'd be incredibly petty and just go no contact with your parents and your mom's family. See how they like being ignored. However you handle it, congratulations to yourself and Lucas. May you always have happiness in each other. Radish Law says, not the a-hole. They were invited. They gave a reason they weren't attending. You accepted their non-participation. And Phil Rice 22 says, not the a-hole. I cannot comprehend this. Just go no contact. Honestly, after all these years, what do you expect will happen differently? Opie's edit. Thank you so much for the feedback and love. It's overwhelming. I'm going to address the popular questions here. 1. I did inform my parents about my wedding. I sent traditional on-paper invites to all my guests and was notified that all invites had reached their addresses. I did not receive any answer from my parents and Mike, a few very distant relatives and some people on Lucas's side. I did reach out to all of them through message to double check and those who hadn't replied told me they couldn't come. I asked my parents and brother via text but they didn't respond. I was left on red. Knowing them and given all the things I had to plan, I didn't bother insisting. 2. I didn't repeat the date of my wedding because I had already been told there was my brother's game. Plus, every time I insisted on highlighting my celebrations to get an answer, I was always told that it wasn't that important and to not be pissy and a bother. Because some things were simply more important than me. At this point, I think it's fair for me to not insist anymore. It's not worth the effort. 3. I didn't keep my wedding a secret. I avoided telling my parents that it was my wedding to see if they would be interested in the slightest, but surprise surprise, they weren't. Despite this, I did openly talk about my wedding with my aunts and uncles. My mother was in the room with us a few times when I discussed venues or dress shops with my aunt, the Facebook post one. 
but sometimes mom was on the phone and other times she was just chatting with other people. She never paid attention. When I talked about it during reunions, she smiled and said, that's great dear, and then would change the subject. Radio silence on dad and Mike. 4. I kept in contact with them because all the times I tried to go no contact in the past years, I've been harassed. I tried after all my graduations, to which they never attended to show up for reasons involving my brother. Every time, I was shamed by my parents, my brother, my maternal aunts and my maternal grandparents. I think the turning point here is that all those times, Lucas wasn't by my side. And now that I have him here, I feel more confident in my stance. My paternal side wasn't aware of how they treated me. I did try to expose my parents once, at 14. My aunts, uncles and grandpa reprimanded them. They faked being sorry and then once we were home, I got what I deserved for lying. After that, I kept in contact regularly with my paternal side but omitting my parents' abuse out of fear, which to be honest, still haunts me to this day. Only my grandpa knew but he was always threatened to be alienated from me if he tried anything. 5. My parents and I are not from the same city. I live in a city an hour drive from my parents' small town and they don't know my address because once, my brother tried to break in my apartment to steal some cash and my mother bagged him, claiming that siblings share their goods. Now I moved and I'll be sure not to tell them where I live. And 6. My parents didn't buy my brother a car and a house before he even started high school. They bought him a car for his 16th birthday and a house near his college when he began freshman year. They didn't spend the money of my fund right away. They just lied to me to use it later for my brother, keeping it stored for later in the meantime. So the community agrees that Opie is not the a -hole and that she should definitely go no contact. And with Opie's additional context in the edit, yeah, that's definitely what Opie should be doing. So now let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. First of all, I want to thank all those who were interested in my story and those who wished me and my husband a happy life. I love you all so much. Art. If I've missed a few details in the original post, it's because I was overwhelmed and crying my eyes out because of my family's harassment. So before diving in the update, let me clarify a few things. 1. Yes, the invitation specifically stated it was a wedding. No excuses. 2. My maternal side of the family didn't come to the wedding. I'm sorry I didn't make that clear in the original post. Most of them were busy and the other just gave me excuses to send a gift but not come. That's it. Don't ask me why they didn't discuss my wedding with my mom. It's not like I live in their brain. And three, my mother's atonement is the fact that she apologized via text. Skull. Now on to the update. Things have been a little crazy this past week. I got off of Reddit for a couple of days to gather my thoughts. Then I had a lengthy conversation with Lucas about how to proceed. He's been my rock and I don't think I could ever love him more than I already do. My parents were always a taboo topic, but he hit me with a brutal reality check that I absolutely needed. We reached the conclusion that the fact I kept in contact all this time, stuck around and couldn't go no contact, isn't healthy. I've realized that the reason I never fully went no contact was that deep down I just wanted their approval, even now, for once. Pathetic, I know. But it's like a drug being with my parents. They can be loving, funny, caring and warm until they're not. The little love they give makes you crave for more and you want their approval so badly you destroy yourself. But that's enough. I promised myself that things are going to change. I've thought about it and decided to start therapy and to go no contact with all those who made an issue about this situation for good this time. After the days dedicated on reflecting on how I feel, I ended up messaging my father to tell him that if he wanted to talk, I would meet him, mom and Mike in a neutral location the following day. He immediately replied and agreed and we met at the park. My father's sisters and brother accompanied us for damage control. My father looked distraught as if he had been crying for a while. My mom looked the same but I think it was more out of anger and embarrassment. My brother looked annoyed. I told the three of them about how their behavior and preference in regards of my brother always hurt me and that their abusive behavior made me realize that I didn't want contact with any of them again after that meeting. My mother tried to cut me off multiple times but my aunt, the one who posted on Facebook, shut her up every single time. 
When I asked them why would they treat me this way, they didn't know what to say. My father kept crying and apologizing without giving me an answer, and my uncle reprimanded him for it. My mother seemed as if she was asking herself that for the first time, but well, in the end, she just said that she simply disliked me, plain and simple. And my brother, he just liked the attention and making me miserable as some kind of sport. I went on with my questions. When I asked why they never responded to my invite, they claimed they had never received one. I showed them the texts and they denied receiving them. And well, it turns out they hadn't, in fact, received my wedding invitation. When it arrived to their house, they weren't there. The only one in the house was my brother, who had come visiting for the weekend. He saw the invite and, as many of you guessed, ripped it up and trashed it. And then, when I texted my parents, he deleted the messages. It wasn't hard to do. According to him, they kept my chat archived and didn't get notifications. Huh. So my parents never actually got a formal invitation. I was just distraught. I asked Mike why would he do that and he just shrugged. He claimed that it wasn't as important as the stuff they had in program anyway. I had to stop Lucas from punching him in the face. Strangely enough, my parents were upset and started reprimanding him. He actually began to throw a tantrum and cry crocodile tears and I must admit that I was kinda satisfied. But then my mom claimed that all was resolved, there was no need to fuss over a misunderstanding and it was time for me to clear their name. That set me off and I interrupted her, telling her that they weren't forgiven at all, that just because Mike trashed the invite, it didn't mean it automatically cancelled or their neglect out. Plus, all that time, it was still very obvious that I was having a wedding and they should have asked about it. You want to know my mother's response? She said something along the lines of, I did hear you talking about a wedding of yours, but I just thought you were being delusional and seeking my attention with exaggerated scenarios. She was convinced Lucas didn't actually like me, nor would ever marry me. When I tell you I was about to trash her face, do you believe me? Another thing came up. It turns out that my brother didn't have a football game to go to at all. They just made up a story to avoid my event. At the time I wrote the original post, I couldn't confirm or deny the presence of a game because my brother has private social media and Lucas and I are blocked. And I foolishly trusted my parents' word. But no, you want to know where they went with that man-child? They went to Disneyland because Mike wanted to go. They used the football story to cover for my brother's 100th tantrum holiday and apparently they did it multiple times in the past month. At that point, I was just completely burnt out and overwhelmed by this amount of information. The fact that I had been fooled this badly, that I was so gullible, genuinely made my blood boil and I snapped. I stood up and told my father he was a sad, weak man, unable to stand up for his kids unless his wife approved of it. I told my brother he was a little dip crap, a poor excuse of a man that will not accomplish anything in his life and that he'll always live like the leech he is, babied to the point of uselessness. And to my mom, I just told her that she was the worst narcissist pathetic little woman on earth and that she didn't even deserve to be addressed and judged for her irrelevance. That not even God could help her out because she is just too rotten. Harsh, I know. My mother shot up from her seat to scream at me halfway through my rant to her, but I was just too mad. I shouted at her to shut the F up and sit down and listen for once. She got so mad, it felt like steam was coming out of her ears. I don't remember much after that, just that I kept talking and talking. It felt as if all my anger and hurt just flooded out. At one point, I'm pretty sure the whole park was silent. I spat at my parents and Mike that I was disowning them all and that if they're smart, they'll think before reaching out again. I took my purse and left with Lucas, Anna and Francis, leaving my parents and brother at my aunt's and uncle's mercy. I think at some point the reality of what I had just learned and said finally hit me because I ended up having a panic attack on the way home. Lucas was driving so Anna helped me through it until we stopped in a parking lot to calm me down. I am beyond grateful for their help. Once home, I just fell on the bed and went to sleep. I really wanted to go with you guys' advice and post the whole thread on Facebook, but given my work and career, I couldn't expose myself like that. One thing is sharing my stories from an anonymous throwaway Reddit, the other is on Facebook with my name and face plastered everywhere. I couldn't go down that path. Instead, I did something better. 
I made a folder with all of my mother's insults, messages, and awful comments and sent it to the woman in charge of my mom's church. It's a tight-knit community my mom worked her ass off to enter in, but that is also extremely judgmental and being shunned by them is a death sentence. And well, that's exactly what happened. Just like clockwork, the scandal spread like wildfire, going out of the church and reaching the rest of the small town. You can imagine what this means for my mother and father. Because of my little spill, I did find other messages from my maternal side of the family belittling me even more for upsetting their sister or daughter and insulting her. I just didn't care anymore at that point, so I followed you guys' advice and told them that from now on, they will no longer be part of my life and that they can talk crap all they want, I just won't care. Instead, they should be grateful I don't send their nasty texts to their employers and spouses. I blocked every single one of them, grandparents included, on everything. I did find a lengthy message from my father. He apologized for not being strong enough to face my mother, agreed that what I said was true and couldn't believe that he had lost so much of my life because of her. He told me he is going to divorce her no matter what my decision will be, because he is tired of being controlled. He would like a relationship with me to make up for all the years that passed. I did reply to him, to tell him that as of now, I really don't want to see him or forgive him. He has replied that he'll try his best to win me back and that he loves me. I replied back that as of now, I find that hard to believe and then blocked him too. Frankly, his slimy way of trying to have an out from this situation by throwing my mother under the bus is pathetic. At least she was hateful and owned up to it. He is only able to blame others for his choices. I don't want to surround myself with people like that. My mother and brother are blocked similarly to my maternal side. Mike wrote other messages to taunt and insult me, I just blocked him. My mom threw herself a pity party for being shunned by her community and for her marriage going into shambles, and I just replied, good riddance, before blocking her too. As for my grandpa, he has decided to stay with us for a while, to stick by my side. He really is the best and has read some of your comments. He isn't going to admit that he's flattered by them. Since then, a few days have passed and all has been quiet. Lucas is spoiling me rotten and I'm starting therapy soon. I know this isn't the drama-filled, revengeful update you hoped for, but well, this is it. Thank you so much for the love and support you showed me. I think I'm going to log out now. As for now, goodbye. Well, OP, it might not have been drama-filled as you say, but it was satisfying ass F to see how your spine shone the whole time. Disowning your parents, telling your brother what a piece of crap he is, exposing your mom and calling out your dad for what he's trying to do? Good for you, OP. And I have to say, your grandpa is awesome. It's great to know that you have him in your life, and Lucas as well. So on that note, here's wishing you the best in the future, OP. Thanks so much for sharing and take care. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.